The day is almost here. Tennessee at Oklahoma, SEC play, hypo returns, all that and more. We're going to get you set with your best game look ahead here on Locked On Balls. You are Locked On Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into it, your Friday morning edition of Locked On Vols. Can't thank you enough for being here. Making Locked On Vols your first listen, your first watch each and every single day. Couldn't do the show without you, you everydayers, and couldn't do the show without our friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook. We're now through September 22nd, again, uh, through the uh, end of the weekend. Yeah, that's how math works. Um, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of the NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. All you need to do is visit FanDuel.com to go ahead and get started today. Boogie Bentley, talking Vols, comes on segments two and three to get you set for Tennessee, Oklahoma. We're going to preview some last-minute notes and some details from uh, Wednesday night's availability reports um, here on a, uh, a segment number one and kind of give some of my keys to victory. All that and more, getting you set for Tennessee and Oklahoma, and we'll cover it. We'll recap it all right here on Lockdown Balls on a Monday morning. I won't have a post-game show or a Sunday show because I'll be traveling this week. I really do apologize. I recognize it's a big game. If it wasn't a night game and I had a couple hours, I certainly would. But as soon as the game's over and we get done with all of our post-game stuff at like 2 in the morning, I'll be hitting the road and, and driving back to Tulsa and uh, going to the airport. So uh, it's going to be a quick turnaround for me. I hope you guys understand that. I do, I do appreciate the cooperation. Um, man, this is huge, right? I mean, this is this is a massive football game. Any way you want to spin it, we've been talking about. It. I've had guest after guest after guest all week long, kind of kind of breaking down and previewing what this what this looks like. And you know, we've got the scout, we've got the keys, and we'll get some more keys here in a moment. But you know, what what are these teams going to look like come Saturday morning? Well, the new uh, injury reports mandated injury reports for Southeastern Conference games. This is the first time that, you know, Tennessee and Oklahoma, for the matters, you know, had to put one out there because it's the first conference game of the season. So on Wednesday night, um, Tennessee put out its first one, and the last one's going to come out 90 minutes before kickoff on Saturday afternoon or Saturday evening this week. And on Wednesday night, Tennessee put out its injury report. Jordan Thomas is out. Of course, he's out for the season. John Slaughter is out. I, I don't know when John Slaughter got hurt. Um, I know he recovered the onside kick Saturday. So it was either later in that game or it was sometime in practice this week. I can tell you that John Slaughter probably wasn't going to play in this football game outside of special teams. He's not in that safety rotation. And I think Idris Farouk is really knocking on that door to kind of overtake his spot if it hadn't happened already. Um, you know, so it's it's Brooks and Turrentine and Jacoby Thomas. And I think Idris Farouk might be that fourth right now, especially with Christian Charles's injury. But John Slaughter's out. Um, uh, he's a good special teams player. Uh, Sham. Yamarov, the offensive lineman, of course, went down, got hurt last game. I still don't know the extent of his injury, uh, but he is listed as out as this week. I know I saw him walking in a boot and getting a ride on the golf cart after the game when I was heading to the media room on last Saturday night, but guys are on boots all the time after games. Um, I, I don't know the extent of his injury right now, but he is out this week. Those are the only players who were who were ruled out. Uh, Lance Hurd, ruled questionable. A lot of people were, were, you know, causing a stir, you know, on on over at VolQuest on social media on um, on Wednesday night when they came out. It was questionable. Thought that he was just held out as a precaution last week, and that still might be the case. He's got an ankle deal. Um, it might not be responding, or might not be getting healthier as quickly as people thought. I still think he'll play. I still think this could be some gamesmanship. I mean. You know, we'll see if it improves to probable before kickoff or at, at another injury report this weekend or this week. But, um, you know, Lance Hurd's listen is questionable. I think the feel is he's still going to give it a go, especially if pregame warm-ups go okay. But that's one to monitor. If, you, if it's not Lance Hurd, it's Dane Davis at left tackle and John Campbell at right tackle. And you're taking your swing guy, right? I mean, that's your guy that comes in and, and gives those guys um, some breathers. And a lot, a lot of people are just saying, like, oh, walk on Dane Davis. We don't want that. Rah, 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 rah. I mean, Dane Davis has played as many snaps as any offensive lineman for Tennessee this year. Dane Davis has started at tackle or played at tackle the majority of uh, two games against Alabama, and Tennessee's fared pretty well with that. I mean, Dane Davis, sign me up. I want him on my team. Is he the most athletic and gifted player in the universe? No, he's not. But is he a good football player and a good football player in this offense and a fifth or sixth year guy? Yes, he is. I think Tennessee's and 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 you know, would you rather have Lance Hurd? Of course, you'd rather have Lance Hurd. Uh, the, the sky's not falling if Dane Davis has to go in there and play. I mean, he's played 
the majority of your offensive snaps already this year, and everybody's in love with everything Tennessee's doing, right? So that's my two cents on that. But hopefully Lance Hurd can give it a go. Uh, William Wright is probable. Ben Bolton's probable. Some reserves. William Satterwhite is probable. Okay, so that's Tennessee. What about Oklahoma? Talk about this media report or this injury you know situation all you know all week long. Uh, Jaden Gibson is a wide receiver. He's out. Uh, Jalil Farouk is a wide receiver. He's out. Farouk was a starter from a season ago, but I think he broke his foot in fall camp, so he's out. We knew that. Gentry Williams is a defensive back. I don't think he's played. He's out. And uh, Hatchet is an offensive lineman, and I believe he is. Hmm. Hatchet's an offensive lineman. He's played a little bit this year, and he's he's out. I think that's the left guard who's out for the year. Uh, you've got. Branson Hickman, who's the center, he's listed as questionable. He's got a high ankle sprain, and of course, you know he 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 went out. I think after ten snaps against Temple Week One, and hasn't returned. So those high ankle sprains are pretty tricky. We'll see what he looks like, but he's questionable. Uh, Jake Taylor has played uh, twenty two snaps at right tackle this year. He's questionable, but he's dealing with a couple of different injuries. Um, Nick Anderson, this is the big one, probable. Ten touchdowns a season to go at wide receiver. Some explosiveness back in that Oklahoma offense. Um, that is monumental. Um, Kendall Dolby, he is a uh, starting star player for Oklahoma. He was listed as probable after missing last week. Um, so th- those are those are some big those are some big pieces in terms of the injury report for Oklahoma. I think Tennessee in this football game, you just got to go in there and run the football, run the football, run the football, do what you do. Um, I think this defensive secondary is going to get tested a little bit. I think that um, for Tennessee, you need to apply some pressure, and I think this defensive line needs to just wear your opponent down as the game goes along. That, I have full confidence that that is exactly what's going to happen in this football game. We talked about it all offseason. Game time's finally here. I think Tennessee's defensive line is just going to wear Oklahoma down as the game goes along. I think Nico. I don't think he'll be afraid of the moment. He's got to handle the elements well. I've been talking about that all week long. I think he's going to make some plays that really put him not on the map. He's already there, but, you know, kind of solidify himself being in that conversation. But I, I still think, you know, down to it, I think this is going to be a Dylan Sampson game. I think Brent Venables is going to try to stop the run, try to not allow Tennessee to do what it does really, really well, and that's run the football. But I don't think it's going to matter. That offensive line and Dylan Sampson are going to run the football, uh, is my opinion in this game. It won't be easy. It will not be a cakewalk. But in the end, I think Tennessee's going to win. You know, I think Tennessee's going to cover that spread and win by, you know, two scores, somewhere around 35-17, 35-21. Um, whew. Big game coming up, guys. You win this game. You are in the driver's seat. We know that for sure. And uh, we can finally, you know, put this monumental game behind us as we move on to other games throughout the season. Because it's always been about Oklahoma, Tennessee all offseason, and it's finally here. What say you? What are your keys to the game for Tennessee in this football game? Love to hear it underscore Kaner and at Locked On Balls. Hey, when we come back, Boogie Bentley of the Talking Balls Network. He will join us as we continue on here with a Friday edition of Locked On Balls. Stay tuned. Want to see about our friends over at Home Field Apparel? It's the exclusive apparel sponsor of Locked On Balls. Football season is here. You can smell it in the air. And if you're heading out to Neyland Stadium this fall, be sure to be decked out in style thanks to Home Field Apparel. Well, with Can't Miss Kickoff 2024 campaign, you can get football boxes, coaches' jackets, bomber jackets, and more. These football boxes, they contain three never-before-seen items for the University of Tennessee. They're not available anywhere else. Curated so fans have new gear and wear it all season long, suitable for all weather conditions. Platinum Box VIPs will receive additional exclusive items, a new hat or a ringer, VIP koozies, guarantees this Platinum Pass guarantees you 20% off and early access to Tennessee football's releases throughout the 2024 season. No more missing out on Home Field because it is sold out. Home Field is a premium collegiate apparel brand based in Indianapolis. Focus is on creating incredibly comfortable, officially licensed apparel with the vintage college designs. These Tennessee vintage designs, whoo, they are beautiful. Wide range of colleges out there, 180 plus to be exact, but you need to check out all the Tennessee apparel over at Homefield Apparel Vintage Galore. Go to homefieldapparel.com to get started today. That is homefieldapparel.com, homefieldapparel.com to get started today. Boogie, this week has not been like last week. Last week, we were just kind of, man, we were just trying to get to the end of the week just to see whatever happened on Saturday, and it was exactly what we expected. But no, this week, at least for me, man, it's been big guess, big guess, big guess, big game, college football playoff stakes, 
Tennessee, Oklahoma, Heupel, Jackson Arnold, Nico. I mean, it's it's been a whirlwind week. It's been fun. All that to say, this is a monumental football game coming up on Saturday. Huge, man. I mean, you go into this thing and you just rattle off how many storylines right there. Like, usually one week, if you got one of those storylines, I mean, you're talking about a premier program in Oklahoma going to play their first SEC game on Saturday night. That's a story in itself. Nico's first road game at Tennessee. You know, we've heard the quote, I like to play on the road. He's got ice in his veins. Well, guess what, young Nico? We're going to find out how much you like playing on the road in the SEC on Saturday night. Nico versus Jackson Arnold, two five-star quarterbacks in the same class. Young guys are one of those guys going to make a mistake on Saturday night, and that leads to a loss for their football program. Oh, and by the way, our head ball coach just so happened to win a national championship for Oklahoma, and he's going back for the first time. thought it was interesting when he met with you guys. He was in kind of a different mood. I don't know if that scares me. We were just talking about this, you know, on Monday when you came on. He seemed like he had this edge. He seemed like a different guy. I don't know if I like it or if it concerns me, but uh, going to be interesting on Saturday night. On that, man, and, and I, I talked about it a lot on the show on Tuesday and a little bit with some guests, but, like, Josh Heupel's a good dude. I like Josh Heupel. Like, the way he is with the media, it's not like he's trying to be disrespectful. He just doesn't want to do it. He's literally there Marshawn Lynch style so he doesn't get fined because he would get fined if he didn't do it. It's in his contract. He just doesn't like doing media stuff. It's it's just kind of, you know, not not his forte. I You know, Bill Martin, people get in his ear like saying, hey, you should do this. Hey, you should do this. Just, you know, on certain things like, hey, they're going to ask you about this, get, doing their job, getting them prepped. And sometimes he takes the advice, sometimes he doesn't. You know that Bill Martin and, and some of the, his colleagues were like, hey, you know, you need to handle this Oklahoma questions with grace. Uh, you need to, you know, be the bigger man. I mean, not like talking to a kid, but like trying to coach him up to be like, hey, dude, like you need to be the bigger man here in front of the media because that will make you look so good. And he looked phenomenal on Monday, man. I, I, he was personable. He was gracious. Um, I've never seen him like that in front of a microphone. I wish he was like that every single time. And, and doesn't that just make Josh Heupel look like, it's like, oh, you want to? I want a natty, and and I scored. You know, I, I ran an offense that scored thirty four points a game, and you fired me. <laughs> it's working out pretty well for me right now. Yeah, we'll go back. I'll revisit all that this weekend, but I'm good. Like it made him look like essentially the bigger person, I guess. I, I just I thought his media session Monday was really good. Yeah, I mean it's it's a, it's an interesting dynamic because you know obviously he still has friends at Oklahoma. Talked about a guy that was in his wedding at Oklahoma. It's like having a bad boss that fires you. You yeah. don't hate everybody at the company that you work for. Mm -hmm. You just hate the guy that fired you. And oh by the way, the guy that fired you is still a special assistant to the AD. What's his title? It's a joke. It's a joke. He's still involved with the program, puppet master. Yes. That's a good. That's bad. Man, why didn't you give me that on Monday? I could use that all week. Instead, here we sit on Friday morning, locked on, talking balls, and now I've got, man, I should have used that all week long. But that's the reality. And let's let's pretend you're not up there in front of the media. Let's pretend Josh Heibel's sitting down to have dinner with his close friends. You don't think he wants to go hang 100 on Oklahoma? You don't think he's got a chip on his shoulder? You don't think he wants to? And he's got a football team that's a family atmosphere, and they want to go to war for their brothers. They, they give a – Good old Bush Jones ism here. A 63 effort every play. We've seen it multiple times, right, throughout the course of this season. Guys giving their all late in the game when it's over. There's nothing to play for. It's over. It's over. And C Coach Hobble always says the scoreboard says 0 0. Play like it's 0 0. They want to go win for their football coach on Saturday night. And I think uh, they're going to come out of Norman uh, pretty proud of what they're going to do. Yeah, I think so too. And, and I also think a big deal, like on this hypo layer of the storyline, like, you know, we in the media, we suck, you know, but we, we, we have to ask the questions. We ask Omari Thomas. We ask um, maybe Andre Turrentine. We asked some players this week, like, hey, do you guys know about what happened with Hypel? Has he said anything about it? Are you guys extra motivated about that? And then, like, no, man, like, we don't. And that's how I've answered the question even before that this week. It's like, this team don't need any more motivation. Not like they're not playing. They're always playing for their coach. They always have their coaches back. Josh Hypel is a player's coach. But this whole Oklahoma Josh Heupel thing, it's got no extra motivation for this team. This team's a lunch pail and, and pick a type team. They 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 want a hard hat and lunch, lunch pail hard hat. There we go. That's what I was looking at. <laughs> They're that type of team. They just want to go to work every single day. And so um Heupel's not making it about himself. And I and I don't think he would, but you're exactly right, man. He um one hundred percent. Like last year, South Carolina hang a hundred on uh hang a hundred on old Shane Beamer. He'd like to hang hundred and fifty on his former school there in Oklahoma and get out of there with a win. So I, obviously this is the biggest storyline of the week. Um, it's been talked about at nauseum throughout the offseason, throughout this week. I, 
it's just it's finally here and it's just like you sit here and think about it, it's like man this is this really is one of those big storylines like i'm intrigued to see how hypo handles his emotions i think he'll be fine but um it should be special for him either way yeah and then <laughs> Let's forget everything that we just said. Let's forget the all the storylines, college game day, Josh Heupel. This is a big football game for this football team. Yeah. Like you said, they've got their own goals. They're trying to go win a national championship, win an SEC championship. And I think this team believes that they can do that. I think there is a confidence to this team. Going back to Joshua Joseph sitting down with you guys, and he's sitting there talking about teams being scared. Tim Banks sitting up there in front of the media and saying we got the best defensive line in the country, you don't you don't put that out there. You do not put that out there. And I'm sure Rodney Garner gave him a tongue lashing after that <laughs> quote. But this is a team that's got confidence. And, you know, everybody's saying, oh, they've not played anybody. And they really haven't. They played NC State. But guess what? You said it Monday on my show. The only team you can play is the team in front of you. And Tennessee has done exactly what they were supposed to do. Now they got a top 15 matchup on the road in the SEC. This game is huge for what this football team wants to do moving forward. Forget Josh Heibel. Forget the storylines. It's important for this 2024 team. Yeah, and kind of on that note, you know, it's it's forget the storylines, but this is a storyline, and it's it's the most important one. It's This is a college football playoff team, that ha, or a team that has aspirations for the college football playoff. Both teams, and I said it when I joined the show yesterday. I can't remember which one. It's been a busy week. But it's like you got to – you got three and oh, you got two three and oh teams. You know, both teams have college football playoff aspirations. One team looks like a college football playoff team, one doesn't. However, both teams have everything in front of them. So Oklahoma's looked like crap at points at times this year offensively. And I know about the injury situations and all that, but Oklahoma wins this football game, driver's seat. Tennessee wins this football game, Boogie. Not only the driver's seat, like you can afford to lose. I mean, as long as it's, in my opinion, as long as it's not just lopsided fashion, man, you can drop. I'm not saying that's the goal, but you can drop Alabama at home. You can drop Georgia on the road. You you win everybody everybody else. I mean, you're in the playoffs, man. You win this game. So monumental football game ahead. First SEC game for Oklahoma, but two teams that are battling for jockeying for playoff positions. Um, I, I saw J.D. Bakel. I know he's a friend of your show, and he's a friend of ours, too. On the hard count, he, he kind of put out like tiers for college football playoff teams, and uh, Tennessee was in that second tier, like on the on the on the borderline, but they were the number one team. Like it's 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 right on the edge. You you get this win, you're in that top tier moving forward the rest of the year. What happens to the team that loses? I was listening to Greg McElroy, and he he seemed to think that Tennessee can lose this game. And maybe maybe it's that moment where you kind of you get shaken to life, and it's like we got to take this thing. I, I don't think Tennessee can lose this game. And that's why it was so hard for me to do my season predictions when we went through it game by game. I think you lose this game. It, it really hurts you because now, like you said, you can't slip up and lose to Georgia and Alabama. You still yeah. got some tough games. On the flip side, you look at Oklahoma's schedule down the stretch. They got a pretty tall task in front of them, too. They got Texas, Ole Miss, Missouri, Alabama. That's four top ten teams that Oklahoma has to face moving forward. But I don't think any one, either one of these teams can afford to lose this game. Now, hindsight 2020, they lose, and then they go beat you know, Florida. They beat Alabama. Then maybe you still make the playoff. But this, man, it feels like it's it's a must win for Tennessee, as crazy as that sounds this early. Yeah, like if you lose – Oklahoma, too, like if you lose, it's the old like, okay, well, you still control your own destiny. It's just along the way, you're on the road in Athens. Like you're at home against Alabama, and I don't care what anybody says, that game's going to be – I know it's at home. I know what happened last time Tennessee played Alabama at home. Alabama sc still scored 49 in that game. Let's, let's remember that. And, you know, Jalen Milrow, last time I checked, he looked really good last week on the road at Wisconsin. I, 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 that's going to be a huge game. So, yeah, you control your own destiny, but you got Alabama, Georgia, you got Florida. I mean, you got some some, some games along the way to where it's certainly not going to be easy, no doubt about it. Hey, we'll got, we got more from Boogie coming up as we continue on here with this Friday edition of Locked On Balls. So much to get into um, as Tennessee gears up for a monster game on the road at Oklahoma can up Saturday at 7.30. Passion, drive, patience, the formula for winning championships that also keeps your ride or die alive. Today, eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and a leveled up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust skits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts, for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, uh, your I try to look at the screen and not my script, and I, I got off track there. That's what I get. With eBay's guaranteed fit, your ride every time or your money is bad because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. I didn't need a script for that. 
With all the parts you need, the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or li- keep your ride or die alive today at eBayMotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's guarantee fit only available to U.S. customers. And over at FanDuel Sportsbook, that line's been moving a little bit. It was at seven and a half Tennessee earlier in the week. It went down to six and a half a couple of days ago. Now back up to seven and a half. That total now at fifty-seven and a half. For some reason, and this is not like me, guys. This is not like me. I'm, I'm liking the under 57 and a half in this football game. I like Tennessee to cover on the road. It's just, I mean, you think about this where we are right now. You got Tennessee covering a touchdown spread, yet your your total for the game is under 57 and a half. That means Tennessee's still, you know, winning by a couple of scores, yet it's not a high scoring game in, in, in the grand scheme of things. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's how far this team has come. And I truly believe that's how good Tennessee is, and I can see that happening this weekend with Nico and Josh Heupel and Dylan Sampson in this defense on the road at Oklahoma. You put in your play. That's my play. You put in your play over at FanDuel Sportsbook. It is America's number one sportsbook. Uh, and plus, now through September 22nd, so literally just a couple of days left, uh, three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube and YouTube TV. All you have to do is put a bet on there for $5. Have a Google account, form a payment, $5 bet, Three-week trial of YouTube and YouTube TV with NFL Sunday Ticket. All that and more. It's over at FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more FanDuel. It's America's number one sportsbook. Boogie, what have you seen from Oklahoma so far, man? Like, I understand the injuries. Uh, let, let's break it up offensively. Let's let's go good first, defensively. Yeah. Mike Tennessee, they ain't played Murder's Row. I think they played, you know, two lanes not bad. Um, Houston's not good. Uh, Temple's definitely not good. Defensively, what do they do well, and 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 do you still have faith in Tennessee's offense to to you know control that game and also to run the football the way Tennessee wants to run? Yeah, I mean Oklahoma's been good against the run. They're giving up eleven points a game. Like you said, though, who have they played? That's what's drove me nuts about this entire week. It's all it's all the narrative has been. Well, Tennessee's not played anybody. Well, neither has Oklahoma. But Tennessee went out and took care of business. Meanwhile, Oklahoma has to kind of limp their way to 3-0. and uh, And I think that's why we've seen the line change. That's why we've seen the numbers change. I think Tennessee is going to do what they do. I think they're going to go out and run the football. The question for me is, what does that Oklahoma defense do? What's their, what's their game plan? Not necessarily what they do well. What's their game plan? Do they sell out to try to stop? Dylan Sampson and, and make Nico beat them because if they do, I think Nico can beat them. I think that's the big key to this game. I think Tennessee's got way too many weapons on the offensive side of the ball for Oklahoma to come and, and do anything. And, you know, I know the, the storyline is injuries and them being beat up. I, I just don't think they can stop Tennessee's offense. And then on the flip side, can they go score for score? Interesting. I say that if it's a shootout, Oklahoma has no chance. I don't think they have a chance to keep up. Uh, but it was interesting listening to you do the fan duel read and talk about uh, taking the under, but also thinking Tennessee can win by two yeah. scores. And I went and looked at my prediction. I'm under, and I've got Tennessee winning by two scores. So that is very, very interesting. And I made that prediction on Wednesday night, so I'm not just riding on Kaner's coattails there. But uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just yeah. curious to see what – Brent Venables versus Josh Heupel, two masterminds, different sides of the ball. I think it's an int- intriguing matchup to see what they do. And I would love it if Tennessee goes out there and just, you know, hits that over, scores a ton of points and everything. But I mean, I just, yeah, I think it's, um, I think Tennessee wins this game comfortably. Um, though, though it's not going to be easy all the time. I think Tennessee covers that, wins by, you know, 10 to 14 points. I just think Oklahoma won't score a whole lot in this game. So, um, anyway, you take it though, you know, a win is a win for Tennessee. Look at that offense, man. Again, injuries we reference, understand that they should be getting a huge playmaker back in Nick Anderson, a wide receiver. Um, we'll see how much that impacts Jackson Arnold, but it's been him to, um, I forgot the guy, the, the Dion Burks, uh, transfer from Purdue. That's been the only passing game. There's been no running game outside of Jackson Arnold. Um, not a lot of explosives. He hasn't thrown for over 200 yards in the game so far. Uh, this offense has been less than pedestrian in my opinion. How is Tennessee's defense going to feast on this? And you know, how, how, if you were Tim Banks, how would you go about trying to pressure Jackson Arnold, make things difficult? I mean, Jackson Arnold is it, right? That's that's the entire offense. And what, what scares me is him using his legs. Can Tennessee contain him, keep him in the pocket, don't let him on third and seven, get out, run around, play backyard football to pick up first downs? Because I, I saw an interesting stat 
on Jackson Arnold. Yes, he's leading the team in rushing yards. If you take away sacks, if you remove sacks from the stat line, he's rushed for over 200 yards, and yep. he's picking up, over, I think it's like seven yards per carry if you remove stat, uh, sacks from the stat line. So that's that's my biggest concern with, with Oklahoma is Jackson Arnold just getting loose and beating you with his legs. Other than that, I, I think this defensive line is going to eat. I don't think Oklahoma is going to be able to line up and run it. Their running backs have struggled. I, I don't I don't see any – I don't know that any – Anybody is going to just line up and run against Tennessee, and that—that's the beautiful thing of the storyline all offseason. Best defensive line in the country. We've talked it. We've talked it. We've talked it. But it's the truth, and they're deep, and they are going to be able to wear on an on an Oklahoma offensive line that's already beaten to death. I mean, they did, did they return a single starter on that offensive line? Nope. Not a single guy. And nope. now they're beat up. You got three guys out. I don't. I don't know if the center is going to play. Was he on the the injury report as questionable? Yeah. So he he's listed as questionable. But I mean, hey, he's got a high ankle sprain, and we saw that yeah. up close with Cooper in twenty twenty one. I mean, that is and, and Brent Hubbs, my boss over at Ball. I know you know who Brent is, but he never heard went of through a, a high ankle sprain like two years later, and he was like, man. I've got all the respect in the world for Cooper. I don't know how he's playing on this right now. Like it, it's tough. So that happened against Temple. It's been a couple of weeks, but uh, very much questionable. The right tackle is uh, questionable, I believe. The left guard's out for the season. Um, yeah, I mean they're they're going through it up there, man. So you didn't return a single offensive lineman, and three of the guys that you're rolling out there are likely to not play. If there is a single position group that I want to be healthy and ready, it's going to be on the offensive line if I'm playing Tennessee. So it's advantage Tennessee right out of the gate. You know, I mean, it all starts up front. It's a line of scrimmage league. And I think I think on the offensive side and the defensive side, Tennessee is going to have an advantage on the line of scrimmage. I, I'm, I'm, I want to see this secondary make some plays, man, because I'm Me sick too. and tired of people talking about how they're not any good in the secondary. I think Jamal McCoy, I think Ricky Gibson – are both really good. And, and I think Boo Carter, the more he plays, the better he's going to get at star. Shout out to my boy, Jacoby Thomas. I think he's going to take over one of those jobs sooner rather than later. You know, well, hey, 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 which one, Boogie? <clears throat> Y'all can hater raid. Y'all Boogie's can a hater, that. man. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm going to keep driving this train. I'm just going to keep driving this train. I'm telling you next, next orange and white game, I'm going to roll down there to Knoxville and I'm going to meet Will Brooks and his family. It's just, it's <laughs> going to happen because you guys set me up for this stuff. I love me some Will Brooks. I just love me Jacoby Thomas a little bit more. He's got and, more and speed it, and athleticism it, and violence. Yeah. I like the violence. And I mean, even like, I, I agree. Like he should take over that spot at some point. That doesn't mean Will Brooks won't play. Like, I mean, they're, they're all three are still going to play, but I'm with you, man. I like Jacoby Thomas. Keep your head up when you're tackling, man. That makes me cringe. Ooh, I hate that so bad. Uh, but he brings Shout out physical. Coach Jay. I know you're listening. Coach Jay listens to this show every morning, prepping for our Friday morning stream. And I always laugh because you old linebackers always say the same stupid. Well, thing. I mean, like uh, everybody's every like, time. that's not targeting. That's just good old fashioned hit. Like it had like the hit. Like that's not why the flag was called. It was it was how he hit him. It was the head down. You know, eating. I mean, back when you play, man, it's like you're gonna be eating food through a straw. And it's like what? And then if you think about that, it's like oh my god, like. It just makes me queasy thinking about it. When I saw the replay, I'm like, oh, yep, okay. So, um, great Head hit, up. though. Head up. That's yeah, it. yeah. Anyway, back. It's hard to cut you off. I like Jacoby Thomas, too. I want to see him play more, for sure. I don't I was done. I'm done. Okay. That's well, on that note. I mean, I was going to finish on Will Brooks. That was it. We're done. <laughs> I, um, I, I, myself, am tired of saying, well, the secondary really had not been tested. The secondary really no. had not been tested. I just want to see some, because I'm with you, man. I think... I think Jermon McCoy, I think Ricky Gibson, I think they're good. I think Jalen McMurray is pretty fu pretty solid as well. Uh, I don't like the depth behind those guys right now, but um, I'm ready to see those guys and those safeties get tested, see how they respond. I think it'll happen this week. We've already kind of given our score, maybe not a, a specific score prediction, so let me hear that, but how do you think this game is going to go overall? Do you think Tennessee is going to go down there and hit them in the mouth from snap one? Do you think there'll be kind of a feeling out period? Do you think Tennessee comes on late? Kind of what are your predictions and – uh, if you had a crystal ball here, how's Saturday not going to go? Man, battered Vol syndrome is real. I, I don't know how many times I say that Josh Heibel cured it, and then every time we roll into a big game like this, I'm like, oh, God, what's going to happen on Saturday? I'll be an anxious, nervous wreck Saturday night. But – it's exciting, man. This is it's it's good to feel nervous again. It's good to yep. feel anxious about this football team because it's been a minute since we rolled into a big time SEC environment with a with a shot to go make a statement, not just win, not compete, make a statement. I think it's important for Tennessee to start fast because even though Josh Heupel, I mean, I, he laid it out there picture perfect. He said they're going to be quiet and calm and they're going to show me respect. They are. I think they're. I think they're going to show him some respect and then they're going to bring it. And, and is it true? Are they honoring? The 2000 national championship yes. team, that is crazy. And I like so, it. I like it. There'll, like be, a, there'll it. be a tribute video, and 
I would assume Josh Hopp will have his own little section in there as the quarterback of that team. Yeah, they're they're going to give him a standing ovation, and then they're going to be ready to go to go to work. And it's going to be hostile. It's going to be as they mm-hmm. I hope Tennessee starts fast. I think that is crucial. Now, if they if they don't, if they go out and they go three and out, I think they can you know live on the defense. And that's the beautiful thing about this football team. They're playing good defense and they're playing good offense. So there's not that pressure to feel like you have to go out and score fifty two to beat Alabama because Alabama is going to score. 49 but I, I hope they start fast I like Tennessee in this game I just like the the matchup of, the, of Tennessee's defensive line and I think if you look at Nico versus Jackson Arnold I just don't think Jackson Arnold has the weapons around him like Nico does and again what he does with his feet I think he can make some plays both guys young both guys have made the mistakes pick six last week versus Tulane of course we saw Nico with his pick six mm-hmm. Nico thinks he can make all the throws can he do that against an SEC team and if he does we saw how he responded against NC State Next two drives after the picks, he goes out, leads the team down the field, and scores. I like Tennessee. I like the matchup. Too many weapons playing complimentary football. Big plays, splash plays. You mentioned it. Oklahoma doesn't have them. Tennessee is in the top five of the country for splash plays over 20 yards. Uh, I like Tennessee 34-17. I, I, think, I think maybe they putter out of the gate a little bit, but, they're man, this team is good, and we're going to find out Saturday. No more excuses. No more BS. I don't want to hear all you guys in the national media out there saying, well, they've not played anybody. We're going to act like Oklahoma sucks after Saturday night because Tennessee's going to put a beating on them, and the goalposts are going to move once again. I got my final score 35-17, so we're right there uh, we're right there next to each other. All right, out the door. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time on this, and maybe it's Nico because you just kind of talked about him right there. The guy we're talking about Monday morning on your show. Tennessee wins at Oklahoma because this player balled out. This player was steady Eddie. This player had a career game. Who is it? I think it's got to be Nico. I I think it's got to be Nico. You can't. And I think I I heard Hub say this sometime throughout the week. You can't just sit back and let Dylan Sampson go five yards, six yards, seven yards, five yards, four yards, seven yards, 75 yards, five. You can't. You can't. Eventually, Tennessee is going to run the football, and eventually you're going to have to sell out to stop it. And when you do, we got a pretty dang good quarterback that is going to show the world. Again, shout out Coach Jay. He said, Oklahoma. I asked him, I said, when is it going to come? He said, Oklahoma is going to be Nico's coming out party, and the national media is going to take notice. We're going to make a statement Saturday night. So we're listening to this early on a Friday morning, hopefully before 9 o'clock, because that's when you and Coach Jay go live, right? We typically go at 10. This week we're going at 9. Coach Jay's got some work he's got to do. Going to be up in the booth uh, coaching a little football. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go 9 a.m. Saturday we'll go live an hour before kickoff for our tailgate show and then also immediately following the game. So come check it out. We're going to do a breakdown Saturday morning early. Coach Jay going to break down the Oklahoma defense. Coach Rice going to break down the Oklahoma offense. I'm going to sit there and look into the uh, camera while they talk and do all my work for them. Hey, just just like a coaching staff, Boogie's the head coach, ain't do shit, don't do nothing, gets oh, paid all that big bucks, right? Woo, woo. I'm the CEO. I'm the CEO. <laughs> Boogie's always, man, appreciate it. Hey, fun week. Um, Tennessee wins, man. It'll be a bye week next week, but it'll be a fun conversation next week. Let's see what Tennessee does, all right? Yeah, I can't wait, man. That is Boogie Bentley of the Talking Vols Network, my good friend and one of the best Tennessee YouTubers out there. You guys know that, of course. Um, If you don't know Boogie, if you're not familiar with his show and what he does, and you like what you just heard right there, tell me, go check it out. Subscribe to his channel. That's Talking Vols. He's got like, I mean, he's probably like 30,000 subscribers on YouTube right now. He's he's the real deal. He does a good job, and uh, he's got some great uh, contributors as well. So go get him uh, a listen. Go watch watch him. Make that your second and third. Listen and watch here on a Friday morning after Lockdown Vols. And uh, like you said, pregame show an hour before kickoff, and then he'll go live after the after the conclusion of the game. So give him a follow and uh, check out what they're doing over there at Talking Balls. We do Locked On Talking Balls. That's what we call it every Friday morning. Segments two and three, getting you ready for Tennessee and whoever they're playing. This week it's Tennessee, Oklahoma. Time is here, guys. One more sleep, and then we get to see what Tennessee looks like. 7.30 ABC, primetime ABC, uh, or ESPN College Game Day is going to be on campus. First time in quite some time. Tennessee and Jackson Arnold, Josh Heupel, Bob Stoops, uh, Brent Venables. Um, storylines galore. Let's see what happens. I think Tennessee's ready for this moment. Uh, no pregame show afterwards. I'll be traveling. I do apologize, but we'll get after it Monday morning. And if you're traveling to the game, you guys be safe. If you're watching it at home, have fun. Can't wait to see what happens, guys. We'll talk Monday morning. This is Lockdown Balls.